Hi, and welcome to the ADHD Friendly Podcast. I'm Patty Blinderman. I'm an ADHD coach, and I'm also always on the lookout for ADHD friendly things to bring and share with you on my podcast. This is episode 24, and it's the one about April Fool's Day and tolerations. I'm going to start with the history of April Fool's Day. And this comes from, appropriately enough, history.com. The website shares that some historians speculate that April Fool's Day dates back to 1582, when France switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. And in the Julian calendar, the year began around April 1st. And people who were slow to get the news or failed to recognize that the start of the new year had moved to January 1st, continued celebrating it during the last week of March through April 1st, and they became the butt of jokes and hoaxes and were called April Fools. They were thought to be gullible. Growing up, I was also thought to be gullible. I tended to believe people when they told me things, and that's really the main reason why I've never loved April Fool's Day. Over time, it's become much more mainstream. And even from 1996, Taco Bell became the first fast food restaurant chain who pulled an April Fool's on people by telling them that they had announced that they agreed to purchase Philadelphia's Liberty Bell and they were going to call it Taco Liberty Bell. (laughs) And a lot of people believed it. And in 1998, Burger King advertised having a left-handed Whopper and lots of clueless customers came in and asked for the left-handed Whopper, not realizing that it was an April Fool's Day prank. And this has gone on through the years. I still don't love April Fool's Day. I don't like when things are put out as true and they're not. It might come from my honesty value being so strong. I don't like that It's a day you have to be on guard all day. It takes more energy. And that's why I tie this to tolerations. Tolerations are anything that by definition drains your energy. They can be in any area of your life from tolerating different people, tolerating things at work, tolerating things at home like clutter or a light bulb that's out. Um, They can be in lots of different areas. When I talked about doing this episode and my inspiration for doing this episode with my assistant, she shared her own April Fool's Day story from when she was a child. She said that she was part of a carpool and her mom was driving that day. And she went to her friend's house and knocked on the door to let them know that they were there to pick them up for school. But there was a note on the door that said that they had to go to the emergency room. And she turned and ran back to the car to tell her mom that they were not there. They were at the emergency room when her friends opened the door and laughed. And she was so upset that she told her mom, she just wanted to go home. This I thought was such a great example of it. A lot of times these April fool's day pranks are done with good intentions and just, you know, as, as light humor, but depending on how you tolerate it, it might drain your energy. So I wanted to talk about tolerations and how to support yourself to manage them with a bit more ease. And April Fool's Day felt like the perfect day to do this. So I want to begin by just sharing a strategy to maybe explore if April Fool's Day drains your energy or if you have other things in your life that you're tolerating. Again, a toleration is anything that drains your energy. So it could be a sink full of dishes. It could be um, maybe your dishwasher is broken and you're washing them by hand. Um, maybe your clothes are a little tight or your shoes are falling apart and you need a new pair. Anything that you're tolerating drains energy. So there's a method called the four D's method, and it's literally four different actions you can take that start with D. So it's easy to remember. So it's do, meaning if you're tolerating something, if you just do it, it no longer is draining you because it's done. Or decide, maybe you're tolerating something that requires a decision. So you're tolerating maybe um, not being sure if you're switching to a new dentist, which dentist to go with. So deciding takes care of that. And now you can trust it off your list. Deleting it, meaning get rid of it. Maybe there's something that you have on your list of to-do things and you really don't want to do it. 
and you don't have to do it. So you can just decide I'm taking it off the list and I'm going to ask myself to do this. I'm not going to do it. An example here might be that you're um, planning to do a certain exercise or go somewhere and you're like, you know, what? I'm just not going to do it. Cross it off, delete it. The fourth D is delegate. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to delegate it to someone else. So maybe it's um, a broken light fixture. So you change the light bulb and it still doesn't work. So you need to delegate it to an electrician. So just making that decision and, de and delegating it gets it done. There are some other Ds that also work here. So building on the four Ds, you might know how to do it, but are resisting doing it. So it might be that it's too big of a task. So maybe it's dividing it into smaller pieces. So let's say you want to organize um, your photo albums or all of your digital photos. Maybe that's way too big and you need to divide it into steps. Maybe you begin by just looking at the past month of pictures or the past year and go from there. The next D could be assigning a due date. So maybe it's just too wide open and there's not a definitive endpoint. So you set one to make it a little bit more urgent. So you decide I'm going to do this by. So if there isn't already a, a due date built in, you're assigning yourself one and maybe build in an incentive to make it a little bit more sparkly. Another thing that sometimes we can be tolerating might be something we just have to deal with. There's nothing we can do about it. So maybe there's a loved one in your life who um, maybe there's certain things they do that, that you find really difficult to tolerate, but maybe if you've listened to my podcast, um, on Seinfelding ADHD, the serenity now approach, you know, where you, you have a mantra or something that you tap into that helps you to tolerate that without it draining so much of your energy. Because some things we really can't just cross it off and get it off our list. There's something we have to figure out how to deal with and do that without it draining so much energy. Maybe you have um, chronic pain or somebody in your life that has a chronic illness. And we just have to explore ways to tolerate that with a bit less energy being drained. And the last is to discuss it. The last D is discuss. So maybe this is relating to a person, maybe something somebody's doing is draining you, but they're not even aware of it. So it could be figuring out how to have a conversation and discuss it so that you're finding ways to manage that with more ease, maybe together collaboratively. So that's the D's method. And I have a tool I'm going to share as a PDF um, that I created. I call it the top five tolerations. Um, and it's just a tool that I created to be able to manage tolerations with a bit more ease in different areas. It's going to be different colors when I post it because I have to reformat it, but I have, um, at home, identify the top five things that you're tolerating at home and just listen, <laughs> excuse me. And then top five tolerations at work, top five tolerations in your family. So once you have your list, the next step is to look for any patterns and then the last step is to do the D's. See if, if you want to just do it and get it crossed off your list, or if you need to decide something or delegate something or delete it, go through the D's and see what you can get crossed off. And just notice, often we're tolerating something so long, we're not even aware of how much it's draining us. And my favorite example here is a light bulb. I'll tolerate a light bulb going out and mean to change it, intend to change it. Maybe I need to buy more light bulbs to replace it. When I finally replace that light bulb, it's like, I'm finally, like I have this amount of energy that I had no idea was being pulled away from me by tolerating that light being out. And once I change it, it just creates this pathway to more energy that gives me more motivation to go back to my tolerations list and cross things off because I know how much it's going to give me in return. And it grows my awareness of how much it's draining me to continue tolerating it. So if you want to run an ADHD experiment around tolerations, maybe related to April Fool's Day specifically, or something else that you're tolerating, I invite you, maybe just start by making a list of things that you're tolerating. Getting them out of your head and into something concrete can help you to then look at the D strategies and see if there's one you can go ahead and do and cross it off or what you could delegate. It just helps you to process it, process it with a bit more ease. And again, I'll share this PDF as a tool, if it's sparkly to you to maybe try this tool out to see what are the things you're tolerating in different areas and maybe come up with some strategies to manage them so they're not draining your energy. Thank you again for your time and attention. And if you like this episode, please subscribe to my podcast and recommend it to a friend. I really do appreciate it.
Until next time, tally ho.